A continuación presentamos el devocional diario traducido al inglés. En español lo puede encontrar de lunes a viernes a las 9 horas en las Islas Canarias por el canal de YouTube. Centro Evangélico Vida Nueva. Dejamos más información abajo en la descripción del vídeo. Good morning, my dear brethren and friends. May the Lord bless you very richly. We're going to be going to be reading the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 12, as of verse 44, the word of the good God says the following. Then Jesus cried out and said, He who believes in me, believes not in me, but in him who sent me. And he who sees me, sees the one who sent me. I have come as the light of the world, that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. And if anyone hears my words and does not believe, I do not judge him, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. He who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. My dear brethren, I have the sensation in the idea that many people that speak about Jesus do not end up knowing who was really Jesus, what he came for, what was the objective of his coming, why he made so many miracles and said everything he said. I have the idea that many people that speak about Christ does not know uh, what are the objectives that the Lord Jesus Christ came to this world. They speak about him, they preach about him, they share about him, but in a very limited way. They do not finish the greatness, the magnitude of his life, of his ministry, of his teachings, of his example. Thanks to the Lord, in our Bibles, we have not one, but four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which give us a lot of information about his miracles, about his profound words and teachings. We see Jesus raising the, the dead. We see Jesus casting out demons from people that were tormented by them. We see the Lord Jesus Christ speaking with the religious people, blessing the children. We see him uh, taking care of women like the Samari Samaritan woman and others. We see him surrounded by crowds. We see him nailed to a cross and we see him resurrected on the third day. Thanks to the Lord for these Gospels, through which we can realize that when we need light in our lives, He is our light. When we need peace, calm, in the midst of the storm, He offers that to us, not as the world gives, but an infinite peace, a peace that is unlimited. When we need company, it sounds in our hearts His words when He says, I am with you always, every day until the day of end of the age. How wonderful it is to know Jesus, to walk with him, that he is our friend, our Lord, our Savior. When a person has a true encounter, a true experience with him, that person will never be the same. Because all of the corners of your soul, all of the emptiness that you have been able to experience, He fills it, He completes it with His presence in such a way that you never feel alone again. You don't need that pat on the back, that call, that visit, because in Christ we are complete. And when are we going to realize that everything that our life needs, we have in Him and with in Him? When are we going to realize that it doesn't matter what men tell us, no matter what the rejection that we may experience, no matter the ridicule, the, the criticism, having him in our lives, we have everything. We do not need a compliment. We don't need something else apart from Christ to be able to have peace and calm and well-being of our soul. But we're going to realize that there are many things that they, it's better not to have because having him we are complete he did co incredible declarations like I am the light of the world I am the way, the truth and the life nobody can go to the Father except through me I am the resurrection and the life whoever believes in him even if he's dead he will live 
and we can uh, mention a lot of words that he pronounced when he was dead. The wonderful thing about all this is that the ones that did not have the opportunity or privilege to know him 2,000 years ago and, and being a part of his disciples, we will see him again. Because the Bible says that he will come. It's one of the promises, more, the most wonderful promises of the Bible, to know that the Messiah, our Lord Jesus Christ, will return again. And a few days ago, I was reading in the book of Zechariah, chapter 14, In chapter 9, he was talking that he will return again on, on a cult. And that makes a reference totally of how he will enter triumphantly in the city of Jerusalem. But then, a few chapters in 14, he says that when he comes, he will put his feet on the Mount of Olives, and that mount will be split in two. And then the millennium will, ha will start when he will govern all the nations of the earth from the city of Jerusalem. We see him in, in chapter 9 coming humbly. And then on the 14th, we see him as a triumphant king coming from the clouds to reign over all the nations of the world. Unfortunately, many did not believe that that first apparition, that first coming and manifestation was necessary and everything was fulfilled according to the law of Moses in Psalms and every one of the books of what we call the Old Testament or Tanakh. And if everything was completed and fulfilled in the first coming, showing us that he was not an impostor or a false messiah like some that had come and then some that come later, how is not going to fulfill the second part? That is the great blessed hope of the ones that believe in him, whether you are from one country or another, when he comes in his second coming, every eye will see him and every knee will bow and all tongue will confess that he's the Lord for the glory of God the Father. Do not wait until it's too late to believe in him. Do not reject, do not waste this new opportunity that is given you to know him because the Lord Jesus is going to fulfill all the emptiness of your heart and you will be able to live in peace and you will be able to share peace and you will have a message to give the world and you will be able to rest and you will be happy even if you don't have a good job even if you don't go out of your routine if you live alone and you are very advanced in age or you feel like a old furniture that they don't know what to do with it When you have Christ in your heart and you start to have a relationship with him every day, you will realize that he is the most incredible experience that a woman can have in this life. I know some belief in, in that uh, Christ that is uh, cling to the cross in which you pray to, but he's not going to listen to you because it's a statute because he has eyes and does not see. He has mouth and cannot speak and he has ears and cannot listen. I'm talking to you about a Christ that is alive that died on a cross but on the third day he resurrected from the tomb and one of the angels when he, when he found Mary Magdalene says do not cry, do not seek the one among the dead, the one that is already alive do not look for the one that is uh, dead do not look for a, a spiritualism in Christ because you're not going to find him he's not there he is alive and he is knocking at the door of your heart with the genuine desire to bless you to transform you to cleanse every one of your sins and to give you a, a new life so that you can walk every days of your life from victory to victory from glory to glory and from triumph to triumph and from blessing to blessing my dear brethren let's pray this morning putting this time in the Uh, in the hands of our good God, asking him to guide us to be our shepherd, to be our counselor, our admirable counselor, that everything that our life needs to be in victory. Do not get in despair. Do not look at your circumstances that are temporal, but look at him, because looking at him and trusting in him, you will be able to be firm with his victory and with his presence. Let's pray, my dear brethren. Blessed Heavenly Father, O oh good God, for this privilege that you give us to start a new day with you. 
I pray, O oh God, in your name, in the powerful name of Jesus, that you will give us a new experience with you, victories, triumphs, blessings, renewal, spiritually speaking. I ask that you will touch those hardened hearts, that you will convince those people that have rejected you for years and that you will enter into their lives and show them how powerful and how good that you are. We put all of our circumstances in your, in your, in your hands, our children, our jobs, our health. We put it all at your feet, knowing that you will keep us and you will bless us, Lord. Thank you for your blessing. Continue working in the people of Israel, in our brothers and sisters, pastors, your servants that live there and that need to continue to see a ride of hope for this terrible thing that is happening. We put our lives in your hands in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. My dear brethren, may the Lord bless you very richly. Greetings from Spain, where I am uh, sharing this devotional with, for all of you, sharing with you these words, these devotionals, Subscribe to our channel so that way the Word of God, the sound doctrine, can run and extend throughout all the nations of the earth. We give thanks to the Lord because in a few days, next month of January, the first uh, days, we will be doing devotional number 1,000. Incredible how much devotionals we have been able to do. May the Lord bless you. Remember that we have a web page, mividanueva.org, where you can find the information about our ministry. May the Lord bless you. We remember trusting and cling to our